Hi there, it's Mr. Clark. Welcome to Lesson Medieval 4.5 on menstrual notation, uh, which was used during Ars Nova, uh, which refers to music from France in the 1300s. This reflects two uh, writings that came out in the early part of the century. You have Ars Novae Musicae by Johann de Morris around 1320, and a work called Ars Nova, or New Art, by Philippe de Vitry around 1322. Both of these continued to refine the system of rhythmic notation, while contrasting their systems against the old art uh, that was developed through modal rhythm and Franconian notation. So the Petronian dot of division introduced very short notes while continuing to notate them as semibrevs. Ars Nova was like, well, these, these are much shorter than actual semibrevs, so why don't we uh, give them their own note value? So we started with the longer getting the beat, then the brev got the beat, now the semibrev is going to get the beat, or the tactus, uh, as it was referred to at this time. Um, and the tactus, the semibrev, is going to be around 120 if it's a fast piece, around 80 if it's a slow piece, around 40 if it's a very slow piece. So, first up, we have the symbols of this Ars Nova notation. We still got the duplex longa, theoretically, it doesn't really appear that often. We have the longa, the brev, the semibrev, and the minima. And these are what rests look like. So if a longa is three brev, you have a three brev rest and a two brev rest, and depending on whether a duplex longa is three longas or two longas, it could be any of those four shapes of rests. If you have a rest that's three, three brev longas, then it would be that. If it's two, three brev longas, it would be that. If it's three, two brev longas, it would be that. If it's two, two brev longas, it would be, yeah. Um, the brev covers one space. The semi-brev is half a space uh, hanging from the line. The minima uh, is half of a space, and it sits on the line. So you can remember this based on the modern whole and half rest, which is what they later develop into. Um, the whole rest is twice as big as the half rest. Mensuration is the relation between a note and the next smallest note value. In modern notes, this is always double. A whole note is always two half notes. A half note is always two quarter notes. A quarter note is always two eighth notes. The menstrual system of the Ars Nova allowed for either two or three at each division level. So, a duplex longa could fit three longas or only two longas. Um, and this division was known as the maximodus or modus maximorum. A longa could be three brevs or two brevs, like we've seen. This is often known as the modus, or modus longarum, or modus minor. Uh, modus is the most common thing that you'll see. The tempus uh, starts to be more relevant because, again, the semibrev gets the beat now. So a brev could be three semibrevs or two. And the prolation is how the semibrev itself is divided into either three minima or two minima. In theory, you could specify all four of these levels. And several theorists created very complicated symbols for each of the 16 possible combinations. However, in theory, people only really care about the tempus, how a brev breaks down into semibrevs, and the prolation, how a semibrev breaks down into minima. So each of these four combinations now does get its own mensuration symbol, which would be equivalent to our modern time signature. And in practice, Composers and scribes didn't always use these mensuration signs, so some guesswork is sometimes involved into which mensuration we're actually in. So the circle was considered a perfect shape, just as three was considered a perfect number, because the circle doesn't have any ends, and as we've already discussed, medieval people were very, very serious about three being the best number. So if you have a perfect three-note fit, tempus, or, uh, tempus, then that's going to be a full circle. The tempus is perfect, so that means your one, two, three, one, two, three. You're going to have three beats in a measure. If you only have two beats in a measure, that's an imperfect tempus. And what's less perfect than a circle? Part of a circle. Okay. Um, and then if you have a perfect prolation, you could put three dots in there because we're dividing it into three. And if you have an imperfect prolation, you only put two dots in there, because you're only putting two in. But then people realize, hey, we're writing too many dots, so just take away two dots, put in one dot if it's perfect, and no dots if it's imperfect. The same applies for both of those.
if we're dealing with this, our imperfect tempest, imperfect prolation, 1d, 2d, 1d, 2d, no special notes. Uh, this is what we're most familiar with in modern notation. Everything's dividing into twos. We're used to that. Uh, for 1d, 2d, 3d, 1d, 2d, 3d, you have uh, the perfect tempus and the imperfect prolation, equivalent to our modern 3-4. Recall the following rules, now adapted for new note values. A brev is perfect if followed by another brev, note or rest. So we previously said that for longas, now it holds to true for brevs as well. So if a brev is followed by another brev, this first brev is going to be its own perfection. A brev is perfect if it's followed by two or three semi-brevs. So the same thing is true if we take that brev and we follow it by two semi-brevs. Ba, 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 or three. Ba, 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 ba. A brev is imperfect if it's preceded by one, followed or preceded by one or more than three semi-brevs. We talked about this before with longas and brevs. If you can imperfect a brev, if you're able to imperfect a brev with a, with a note following or preceding it, uh, choose the note following it. If you have a choice to imperfect it with something before or something after, choose a note after. A brev rest cannot be imperfected. So if you have a brev rest, it's always going to be three semi-brevs. No questions. Uh, but a semi-brev rest can imperfect a note. If two semi-brev rests happen in a row and they're on different lines, they belong to different perfections. So if you end a line with a uh, semi-brev rest and then you start your next line with a semi-brev rest, then they belong to different perfections. If they're on the same line, they belong... Oh! I misspoke. Literal lines of the staff. So if they happen in a row and they're on different lines, they belong to different perfections. So those would belong to different perfections. If they're on the same line, they belong to the same perfection. If you have this specific rhythm, brev, semi-brev, semi-brev, brev, the second semi-brev gets doubled in length. That's that alteration we were talking about. Ba, 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 ba. And then a note can only be altered, like we just did, if the following note is of higher value. So a brev is of higher value than a semi-brev, so we can alter it there. So... If you're dealing with your uh, then these are rules to follow. Here we have one key da, two key da, equivalent to our modern six eight, imperfect tempest, perfect correlation. Similar rules apply. Often we're dealing with semi brevs and minims in this case, uh, so you would just transform brev to semi brev and semi brev to minim. Uh, brevs can be imperfected by minims, which is which gets weird. Uh, this is known as imperfectio ad partum. Um, imperfection, like, by parts. So here we have a brev, and then we have a minimum, and that's going to form a perfection. So we just stick the minimum at the end and take its value away from the full brev. One, da, one, da, two, key, da. Here we have a group of more than four minimum, uh, more than three minimums, so the first one's going to imperfect the semi-brev, then we group into three, then we have a minimum, imperfecting a brev, because it can't fit in with the previous one, and we have another minimum, uh, uh-oh, how is this going to fit? Uh, okay, well, we have a dot here, so that clearly says that's going to be a perfection, and that's going to be your perfection, so then we need to fit this into perfections somehow. Um, so we're going to go... That all, so then that has to fit somehow. Okay, so then we're going to translate that. One, da, one, da, two, key, da, one, key, da, one, da, two, key, one. So here, both of the minims are imperfecting the brev on either side of it. So we just, they're kind of like chomp, chomp. They take away values from the brev. Here, we need this dot because otherwise you'd have semi-brev, minim, minim, semi-brev, and you would, in that case, alter the second semi-brev. That would be ba, 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 ba. That would be a totally different rhythm. That's why that dot is important. Here we have our 
one Kida, two Kida, three Kida. Both levels are on threes. There are a couple added complications, as if we didn't have enough already. Uh, so the breath should be equal to nine minutes, theoretically, because you have a breath, you divide it into three semi breaths. Again, not drawing diamonds well. And then each of those is divided into three minims. So I'm not going to finish drawing it out because my. Okay. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it should be equal to nine minims. But imperfection shenanigans can bring it down to as few as four. If you brought it down to three, that would just be a semi breath. So here we know that both of those belong here because of the dot of division. So they're going to chomp on either side. One key da one. Okay. So that actually worked. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven minims. Here, again, we have that. So we're going to go chomp, 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 chomp. One key da key da one. So there's only five. Here, one, two, three, four, that's not going to fit into a whole bar by itself. We have that dotted division, so we're going to go chomp, 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 chomp. One key da, two D da, one. So this and this and this are all the same note. That's awkward. Um, a note can be altered and then imperfected. So here we have... A brev by itself. Okay, great. It gets its own measure. Here we have two semi brevs and then a brev. Well, the brev's going to get its own measure. Brev gets its own measure. So then we need to figure out how to turn that into a measure. Um, so we have two semi brevs, and the rule is we're going to alter the second one by doubling it. So if we ignore the minimum, we get one, one, two, one. But then that minimum is going to imperfect the altered note. So we get one, one, two, da, one. Really. Uh, these weird rhythmic tricks, fortunately, are more common in theoretical treatises than in actual practice. So it's not super likely that you'll run into them, but it's possible. Okay, so now we have to deal with dots. We've met the punctus divisionis before. That's what uh, Petrus de Cruce introduced. It separates perfections and acts like a modern bar line when you need some clarification. So we want to write this rhythm. One, two, one. I can do rhythm. One, three, one, two, one. That's the rhythm that we want. It's in three, four, so we're going to use this mensuration. So we have a brev, a semi brev, semi brev. Uh, if we want to write that as a semi brev, then we would have three semi brevs in a row, so that would be one, one, two, three, one. So that's not going to work. Uh, if we turn that into a brev, then we get one, one, two, one, one. What we really want to do is say, no, these first two notes belong together. So what we need is the punctus divisionis. We stick that in there to be like, nope, those two go together. And then you can figure out the rest. There's also a punctus additionis, or augmenti, augmentationis, uh, the dot of addition, that is placed after an imperfect note in any mensuration to add half the value. This is where the modern rhythmic dot comes from, back in lesson 1.1.4. So here are some examples. Here we have a brev, a dot, a semi-brev, and a brev. In this case, we're in our... 2 4 equivalent where everything is divided imperfectly. So there's no way to um, alter something or imperfect something because everything's already imperfect. So in this case, it has to be a dot of addition. So we take the value of the breath and we add half to it, and then it makes sense. One, two, one. So here, the first dot is a dot of division. It says this brev goes by itself. The next dot is a dot of addition, where it makes the value of the semi-brev 1.5 times what it should be. So here, 1, 1, d da, 1, 2. And you might be wondering, well, how do I know which one's which? 
context clues, experience, comparing to other parts, this is where it gets a little ambiguous. Um, here's another example in our same 3-4 equivalent mensuration. Here we have what you might at first think it's a dotted division, like, okay, these two go together, and then we have no way to really make sense of this. That doesn't make sense. So we go back and we say, well, okay, what if that's a dot of addition? So we have one, three, da, 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 da. Okay, that's starting to make more sense. Because then we can divide it into perfections. So in modern notation, one, three, d2, three, one. There are some helpful strides that differentiate these two types of dots by putting the dot of division higher up or making it more like a check mark, but often you just have to use context. A dot of addition must always be followed by the next smaller note in order to match with the time added from the dot, but this note might be not immediately after, but further down the road. So here, we have a uh, semi-brev, semi-brev, dot of addition. So that's going to be worth three brevs instead of uh, two. And then that matches up with that minimum. And you're like, well, there's a lot of notes in between. How am I supposed to know that? You just, you just got to figure it out. So here we have one, two, D, 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 one. So this effect where you have, um, this, this effect is known as syncopation. It's a term that was first used by Demaris and Dimitri, and they define it as the division of a note into separate parts. So that and that, that are separated by one or more perfections in the middle. So that's the original definition of syncopation. Today we understand it as just kind of rhythms that emphasize offbeats rather than onbeats, but that's where it comes from. Uh, the last thing to note is coloration. In perfect mensurations, red notes in the tenor indicate a change to imperfect mensuration. Put another way, if you have three red notes, they equal two normal black notes. And here, I've lost the mensuration from black and white printing. I'm, I've lost the coloration from black and white printing, so I'm adding it back in. So we are in. Uh, do, do, do. We have one, one, two, three. And then we would expect one, 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 if they were black notes. But they're red notes, so they're all going to be imperfect. One, three, two or as written there in 3-2 time. Uh, last thing? Yes, last thing we're going to be looking at. This is a long video. Menstrual notation is complicated. Uh, would be endings. So if you're looking at some secular forms, they often add repetition. One of the ways to notate this in modern music is with first and second endings. Medieval had a similar system where the first ending was known as the overt, and the second ending was known as the close, open and closed. So in this first example, the end of the over group is shown with a single line, and the end of the close group is shown with a double line. However, you don't know where the over group begins, so you have to figure out when to jump over to the close group. Uh, in this case, it's fairly clear since there are some notes repeated. You see, oh, uh, okay, that matches up with that. So I would go from here, and I would skip over to the close. Here, let's see, okay, that all matches up, so I would skip over from here to the close. Here, okay, that looks the same, so I skip over from here to the close. And so in modern notation, starting D, F, rest, da, 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 da. The second ending, da, 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 da. And the same sort of thing for the other groups. However, endings aren't always so clear, and they don't always even have the same length between parts. In this case, they lined up nicely. Um, so here, the lines at the end of the overt and the clouse are different sizes for different parts. So here we have a small line here, amazing. And we can see that it that note probably lines up. So we're going to skip from here over to there for our second ending. 
and we've notated da 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 and it's different in the second ending, but we can see that they both start with that F. Here, that first note is where it changes because we have the C to the F. So from that first note, we're going to jump over. And we see here that the first ending is three bars. This first ending is four bars. So if we're going to notate them in a score, we have to line them up. And in this case, we just repeat that note. Um, we just make them both four bars to accommodate what's going on. This comic, I think, uh, thumbs up the complications of menstrual notation. So enjoy your dragon. Enjoy your menstrual notation. I'll see you next time.